Hi folk, I've done a couple of videos on um, what the new Windows Mobile Device Management platform looks like that Google's put into the uh, Google Admin Console. Um, I've done a blog post which this video will be embedded in which goes through some of the policy settings that we're using now in a live deployment as part of uh, uh, the beta of the program. So what I'll just show you to give you an idea of what the policies that are put in the po in the uh, blog post do actually look like. Um, I've got a virtual machine running here, just on Oracle VirtualBox on my PC. Um, this is for a skill called New Marsden, but that's just desktop wallpaper really. And over here, in device management, we've got Windows settings. Now to be able to use this, you do need to have some enterprise licenses, so just a regular G Suite won't cut it, you will need some enterprise licenses um, and the people who enroll the device will need an enterprise license, so we have some accounts that specifically we use for enrolling devices which do have enterprise licenses alongside some of our administrators like me that allow us to do some stuff that otherwise we wouldn't be able to do. So, um, just like in the previous videos, this has um, got an ability to add a uh, Google account, so you can just sign in with your regular G Suite account. Um, if I go to this test student here, uh, which is already signed in, that's where I see if I can remember the Google password for this user. I think I might have got there. Um, hopefully that will sign in in a second. There we go. And this has had some software deployed to it. Uh, we've got a custom start menu there. Um, I haven't bothered deploying um, Office to this one because it's quite a big download and my home internet's not that fast so I just didn't bother running the command that downloads and installs Office. But normally you'd see Office here, that's why these tiles are blank. But this start menu here is one that um, we deploy. And so that's kind of what it looks like. You've got a managed um, background here that the user can change, some software that we've pushed and if you fire up Chrome um, this user is already signed in, you'll find that it signs you into Chrome which is really cool. Uh, so we're doing this really because from the end user point of view it makes things so much simpler and from the back end point of view while there's, it's got some way to go in terms of policy management it's one place to manage policy, not like multiple places to manage multiple types of devices. So we can do it all in the Google Admin Console, which just saves a lot of time. And um, from the end user's point of view, it's just considerably easier. They've got a Google login to a device, Chromebook, PC, doesn't matter what it is, and they just use that account. End of. Um, as we use G Suite, that's good for us. It's obviously not going to be for everybody. So. You've got when you've got these devices appear in your management console, and you can automatically wipe them and stuff like that, just like you can do in Intune. And this is what it looks like in the back end. Um, so uh, account settings essentially allows you to decide who can be a local administrator of a computer. So you can deploy to an OU, let's say your IT support team, you guys with your Google account and our local administrator of that computer. So when they remote on, they can do stuff. Uh, Windows updates, you can set a Windows update policy, active hours, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you can do this by OU. The, when you do things by OU, it applies to the user who first deployed the machine. So uh, that's tagged to that particular machine, so you can set the active hours and um, how Windows updates is going to appear for your end users just like you can in Intune. You can set BitLocker encryption settings. But the real meat in a sense is where you've got these custom settings. Now you can do this in Intune. Um, and Intune obviously has now packaged a lot of these together into a GUI um, to make it easier. Uh, but Google's implementation of custom OMA URI policy is actually better than Intune as far as I can see. So if I click on here it will open these up and you'll see the policies that have applied. These are ones that are 
applied at the root of our organization um, and there are other ones like desktop wallpapers applied at specific OU level. If I wanted to add a custom setting I'd just go in there type in a name, that name can be anything you want something that makes it understandable to what it is but here is where you'd put in the um, policy now unlike Intune where you have to actually know exactly what the string is you can just type in a bit here, let's say I wanted something to do with a proxy not proxy, uh, proxy you'll see that all of these policies and you just scroll through and find out the one that you want so for example one that I've used is um, uh, proxy setup script URL. So if like us you use them like securely then uh, you click on that string and that's just the URL that securely would give you to, for the smart pack file and that would set it up for your usage and you click on add another so you can add multiple policies at once um, or um, just deploy that one, it'll prompt you to what OU do you want to apply that to or is it to the root of the organization. Um, so I've got a couple of pages of these and in the blog post I go through what each one of these um, policies does. Um, probably uh, the most com tricky one to do, well, okay so the most tricky one that I had to do was deploy um, SSL certificates so this is for our securely content filtering so if I click on edit here um, this is the policy string that you need here and when you get your SSL certificate you kind of have to install it on a computer and then look at it and there is a sort of ID for the certificate when you look at the details of the certificate which is that string there and then when you open up the certificate you need to paste in the string of characters that you can see in there. So that's the current securely SSL certificate. Um, uh, but what you've got to be a bit careful of is uh, when you open it up in Notepad um, it put lots and lots of returns at the end of the line. So you actually got to remove all of those returns at the end of the line. There can't be any returns um, there is a couple of nice neat websites that do this automatically for you because there's quite a lot of lines there and if you make one mistake it won't work um, so deploying certificates is uh, it, it's not hard once you know how to do it but um, it is not as slick as like just adding one for Chromebooks or something like that in the management console but it works fine and uh, that's pretty much the only one we need so once it's there we can kind of forget about it until 2034 or whenever that one's valid um, but other than that, most of them are relatively straightforward. Wi-Fi requires the deployment of an XML file. Um, I'm not going to open up any of these because they've got our Wi-Fi keys in, but if I um, click on that one, uh, use that particular policy there, and this bit here, where I've got WPS Chrome, that's our SSID. It just needs to be unique identifier because you can apply this policy multiple times and give it whatever your particular policies, so that's our main SSID at Wheatley Park and then you upload an XML file and I've put some examples in the blog of the XML and really all you have to do is put your key in and put your SSID in. Slightly esoteric thing is you also have to put the SSID in in um, hex. Um, so there are some quite good sites and I use um, uh, you Google ASCII to, to hex. Um, this site comes up, rapidtables.com, and uh, you put in um, my SSID. Uh, you don't want any delimitators or anything convert, and that's the hex string that you need to um, deploy your uh, SSID. Um, so, I mean, it's not hard, but it's just a little bit weird that you have to put it in hex and ASCII too. Um, I'm not sure why. Anyways, that's what you have to do. And kind of that's it. And it's relatively straightforward to use once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, what's not there at the moment is any software de deployment. I don't think they're going to put any software deployment from what they've said to me. Um, so we just have a memory key with all the software that we want on that particular 
device and um, we just run a script and you just run the script and all the software and some settings goes onto it and uh, it's actually quicker to deploy than in tuning device where it pulls all the device software from the cloud at some of our sites so um, yeah it kind of works um, I wouldn't deploy this to a student computer um, because I'm not 100% confident I've locked everything down I've got app locker policies and things in place so there's not much they can really break um, but yeah, you never know. It works fine on teacher computers, and printers are deployed using um, paper cuts uh, print deploy, and um, so they get prompted to sign into paper cut, and then the correct printers get added to the device. So that's kind of um, a little bit of an overview of what it looks like in the back end, um, the details of all the settings that I use, and what values you need, and what they do. Um, are in the blog post if it's something that you're interested in. They're equally applicable to uh, Intune as well, those settings, although Intune has a GUI for some, but not all of those settings. Okay. Any questions, then uh, you can uh, post a comment on the blog or YouTube, um, and I will get back to you.